In this video, I'm going to show you five simple ways to level up your 3D in After Effects. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is the video shop. Before we start, I should say this video isn't aimed at beginners. I'm going to assume that you're familiar with 3D layers, lights, and cameras. I've done tutorials which cover all these things, so any of these will be good primer for this tutorial if you're struggling to keep up. Saying that, I'll run through very quickly how I got to this. So I recently needed to animate a client's logo. I decided to create something similar to this, which is a background animation on their website. I made a version of the logo in Illustrator, which had small gaps between the different sections. Each section has its own layer. I then imported the artwork into After Effects and set the renderer to C4D. You can only bend vector artwork layers, but if you convert them to shape layers, you then have the option of extruding them. Not only that, but you can add front and side colors if you want. To make things easier to adjust, I've expression controlled the colors here. I've moved the sections of the logo so there's variation on the Z position, and I've added a camera, which is low down looking across the logo, then parented the camera to a knoll, which is in the center of the logo. The knoll is very slowly rotating on the Z axis, which gives us this. That's it for the setup. Okay, let's get started. Lights. They're going after the lights. You want to add a spotlight to your scene. When I added mine, I used these settings and they broadly stayed the same. I'll show you the final setup shortly, but I find this is the most time consuming part. The lights in After Effects definitely give you more basic results than Cinema 4D or Blender, but hey, this isn't 3D software. What I found worked for me was to get the settings on one light to a stage where I was happy with how it looked, then duplicate it. So I had two spotlights, both cast in shadows, but one was brighter than the other, and I tweaked the shadow diffusion values. I'm not an expert on lighting, and I'm sure you can get better results, but here's what I finally ended up with. I made the front and sides of the logo white, benefits of expression controlling folks. The main spotlight gives us this. So we've got the light hitting the sides of the logo here and shadow here. Then the duplicate brightens things up a little bit and gives us an almost ambient occlusion effect here. These are the settings of the two lights. And finally an ambient light set to 30 to brighten things overall. I know it looks flat and well, pretty crap, but we'll fix that shortly. A couple of tips. Sometimes it can be a pain moving more than one spotlight around. I've parented both of mine to a null, so I can rotate that null and quickly see different results. Second, things can start looking pretty cluttered in your comp window, and it becomes hard to see the elements in your scene. Use shift Control h to hide and show layer controls. Anyway, with all that done, that takes us from this to this. The next step is a super quick fix. We'll go into geometry options, and set the bevel from none to convex. This is going to expand the alpha of the layers, so in this case, we're now losing the gaps between the sections of the logo. It's also a bit too big anyway, so I'll set it to 0.7. Again, we can copy and paste those geometry options to the other layers. The bevel on the edges catches the light and it instantly looks a bit nicer. Reflections. Go into material options again and adjust the reflection intensity which by default is set to zero. We now have this. I've ignored all the settings apart from the intensity, sharpness, and roll off. You want to experiment with these settings with whatever you animate, but I settled on these amounts. As before, we can copy and paste the material options to the other layers. And if you want, you can have them all expression controlled. And now we have this. It's a bit dark, but we'll fix that shortly. Depth of field. C4D renderer doesn't currently support depth of field. Until it does, if you have a simple camera move like this, you'll just have to cheat it. We'll put our logo comp onto the new comp icon here. Then in that new composition, set the renderer to classic. I've added a shape layer and renamed it blur map. Then add a gradient fill. Angle it. And we'll set the colors from white to black to white. Then add the compound blur effect to an adjustment layer and select that matte layer. Make sure you select effects and masks on this dropdown. 20 is a bit much for what we want here. I'm going to set it to five. You might notice the background color creeping in at the edges. I'm going to fix that by adding transform and then bumping the scale up to 102. We now have this and we're nearly done. Unlike 3D, this next stage is very much what After Effects excels at. The reason I've left the animation grayscale is I'm going to color it and beautify it using effects and layer modes. Exactly how you do this will very much depend on your particular scene, but for this, which has a very simple color scheme, 
I've added the tritone effect and curves. Typically, when I'm doing stuff like this, I'm toggling through layer modes, adding glows, etc. Just seeing what works. So don't feel like you need to copy exactly what I've done here. In fact, I probably wouldn't recommend it. I've duplicated my master pre-comp and set that to multiply layer mode. Then blurred that even more using a standard Gaussian blur. That gives us this. Then I've added another adjustment layer with curves and vibrance effects. And that's it. This is how I used this animation in the promo I worked on. It basically bookended a standard 2.5D animation. The 3D isn't meant to be the star of the show. It's a nice animated background for the text and logo to sit on. I discussed the process for this whole animation in my next video, but in the meantime, if you want to explore some of the things we've looked at here, you can check out one of these videos. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.